A few videos ago I 3D printed a rocket engine that uses vortex cooling to protect the combustion chamber. The concept is really simple. You inject oxygen tangentially through the nozzle to create a thin spiral around the walls of the engine and thus keep it cool. Because the vortex is generated in the nozzle, the nozzle itself is not protected. So I 3D printed it in ceramic resin and the engine worked pretty well. But here's the question. Why not just 3D print the entire engine in ceramic resin? This video was brought to you by Skillshare. The process I use to 3D print ceramic parts is not that straightforward. First, I need to 3D print the parts in a resin called porcelain, that is 83% ceramic powder and 17% resin. Then, I need to use a high temperature furnace to burn out the resin in the part so I can get a 100% ceramic part that can withstand very high temperatures. 3D printing the resin is fairly simple using an LCD 3D printer, but the firing of the resin shrinks the part 17%, which can cause cracks and deformations. To avoid this kind of results, the guidelines say I should not design parts to be thicker than 1mm. But why should I trust the guidelines? So, I 3D printed 3 cylinders of different thickness in ceramic resin. One with 1mm in thickness, one with 2mm in thickness and one with 3mm in thickness. I placed them in the kiln where the resin was completely vaporized and the results were the following. The 1mm cylinder had minor deformations but no cracks. The 2mm cylinder had almost no deformations and zero cracks. And the 3mm one has more cracks than a nudist beach in the south of France. Bonjour. The 2mm thickness seems to be the best to get good results, but to increase the chances of success a little bit further, I used isogrid. Isogrids are ribbed patterns that don't increase the overall thickness of the part, but help a lot in terms of overall strength. I designed the modular rocket engine that allows me to change the nozzle and the body to test different dimensions and geometries. This particular engine has a 30mm in diameter combustion chamber and a 6mm in diameter nozzle. The nozzle has a spiral vortex generator that will inject oxygen through the walls until it reaches the back of the engine and mixes itself with the fuel. Once I had a finished design, I sent the parts to my LCD 3D printer. Okay, right now it's 7 a.m. in the morning and the parts are finished sintering. They are still pretty hot, but I couldn't wait anymore. Uh, I'm gonna remove the support material and see if the parts are cracked or deformed. Even though I can tell right now that they don't seem to be cracked. I think I'm high on ceramic powder. As you can see the parts are not perfect, but they're pretty nice for a first try. I mean, I never tried to print the whole rocket, I tried the nozzle. Um, even though I think I used mostly 2mm thickness, there's not a lot of cracks or deformation. Uh, the exterior is a little bit rough because of the support material, but otherwise on the inside it is almost perfect, and I think it should work. I just need to seal it with some cement or maybe some slip and they fit quite nicely. Yeah, I'm gonna wash my face. The engine was ready to be assembled, but then I thought, what if I created a design that doesn't need to be assembled? So I did. <laughs> okay. I think the parts are done, uh, it's still at 1, 150, but I think I can take them off with the gloves. Oh, one of them fell over. Can you see that? The other one seems okay, but this one, it fell and I think it's cracked. I'll remove it and see. Okay, so as you can see, this one 
it didn't have support on this side so it fell over and it's completely deformed and cracked here this one I think I never I never got such a perfect part it doesn't even have isogrid and it's perfect I'm gonna remove the support material the other one is trash where is my pliers Here in Portugal we have a saying, there's no two without three. That doesn't really translate very well. Anyway, I designed the third engine with a 25mm in diameter combustion chamber and a 4mm in diameter nozzle. The body I 3D printed in normal resin, so I could make sure that the vortex cooling was working. Sponsor time. My first YouTube video sucks, but I'm not the only one that sucked when I was beginning. Jay from Plasma Channel? Suck. Bobby Ducart? Suck. Electro Boom? Suck! And Tom Stanton! Well, actually his first video is kind of cute. But also... Suck! My point is that everyone sucks when starting something new. But eventually get better. After a lot of mistakes and watching a ton of crappy YouTube tutorials with dubstep intros, flash transitions and of course audio recorded by a potato. Hello guys, welcome to another video here on the channel. Of course I'm not discarding YouTube tutorials. They are the backbone of my knowledge. And free! But for less than $10, you can get a much better option. Skillshare is an online community with thousands of classes taught by experienced professionals. They will take your money, but in return they will give you knowledge and information that would otherwise take you years and a lot of mistakes to get. Trust me. I still use their classes to get better at animating, editing and audio. I just took a class about getting better audio, because thanks to Dragon Ball Z, I truly believe that as long as you try really hard to get better at something, you will get better. If you really have something that you want to learn, stop procrastinating and use the link in the description down below. The first 1000 people to click the link will get a free trial for a premium membership of Skillshare. By clicking the link you're also helping me make better videos. So thank you. Back to the video. With the 3 engine 3D printed, all I needed to do was basically assemble them. I mean, not the one part engine, that one I don't need to assemble. It's just one part. I do need to glue the tubes for the fuel and oxygen. But that's not really assembling the engine. It's more preparing for testing, right? It's not assembling. That's the purpose of the engine. It's just one part. It's simple. I don't need to assemble it. Okay, so I have the three engines, I'm using the oxygen from my brazing kit to use as an oxidizer. The fuel will be the propane fuel and what else? What am I missing? Hello? Greetings in Netsuke. Tomato Lord Jr? Yes, it's me. How is the project going? Well, I'm about to test the engines, why do you ask? What are you using for ignition? I'm using Intexabot. I always use Intexabot. How can you use a dead robot to create sparks? What do you mean, dead? That's right, Intexa. <laughs> I'm not soft like my father. Now you have no ignition and no rockets. Listen here, you little <laughs> I'm gonna smash all your family into ketchup and then serve it to the toilet. Threaten me all you want. Nobody's going to subscribe to a channel with rocket engines that don't work. People only like videos with actual projects. Without a plasma channel to ignite the propellant, it's over. You're doomed. Wait, what did you just say? You're doomed? No, no, no. Before that. It's over? No, before that. You need a plasma channel to ignite the propellant. A plasma channel? Yeah, I do need a plasma channel. Ha <laughs> ha.
A while ago, Jay from Plasma Channel gifted me a Tesla coil that uses the old school circuit, which means it uses a spark gap, which also means it uses a gap and a spark. So yeah, I use the Tesla coil as an ignition method. It's not that weird, is it? Is it? Say hi. Hi. Now I'm going to connect the oxygen. Things are about to get very explosive. Let me introduce you to my little friend. The oxygen tank. Well, let's give it a try. Well, that was underwhelming. Wow. Yeah, it's leaking. We need to fix that. Even with the refractory cement, the engine was still leaking through the porosities of the ceramic. Um, to solve that problem, I used two different methods. I used refractory glue and high temperature silicon. Let's do this. Oxygen. though I say let's test the other engines let's test the other engines yeah wait a second why is nothing happening I don't think I literally just tried to start the engine without connecting the propane and the oxygen <laughs> I'm so stupid okay let's try that again Yeah, uh, let's try another one. It's still leaking. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. So right now we're gonna test the red torpedo, my little red submarine. Uh, I actually made this just to be like a very simple, easy to print uh, engine. I don't know how it's gonna work, but let's test it. was intense. Let's try it again. Wait, what's going on here? I feel like I'm going to master most. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think the the engine is a little bit destroyed. I would say. Let's try it again anyway. Because here in this channel we test things until they are completely destroyed. Jesus. Yes! The engine is dead. We killed it dead. Excited, Katrina! Look at it! Yes, it's smoking a little bit, but it's not burning! Ooh. Oh yeah! Alright! 
Oh, two. Ready? Can you call this a success? I'm not sure. I wouldn't call it a success. I mean, it doesn't completely burn down. I mean, if it wasn't leaking, it would work properly, I think. But it's leaking too much. Every time I increase the chamber pressure, it starts leaking everywhere. I need to find a way to stop the leaking. You, you can turn off the camera. Okay, so I still don't have a fully working 3D printed liquid fueled vortex cooled ceramic rocket engine. But I'm almost there, I think. If I solve the problem of the leaking, I have a proper engine. So if you guys have any idea on how to solve that problem, please leave a suggestion in the comment section below. You guys have helped me in the past with the pulse jet problem, so I'm counting on you. I'm well aware that not everyone watching my videos has a 3D printer at home to replicate this project. And that's the reason why, on my last video, I gave away a 3D printer to the most liked comment suggesting a theme for a future video. The winner was Adam Vault, and he suggested that I could revisit the project of the solid fuel sugar rocket engines. It's a good idea because it's easier to make that kind of engine, and I would be able to test more nozzles. What you guys think? If you also want to win a 3D printer, all you need to do is subscribe to the channel, leave a like on this video, and post a comment suggesting a theme for a future video. The most liked comment will receive a brand new 3D printer. Well, this is everything for today. I hope you enjoyed the video, and remember, Tomatoes are disgusting. See ya!